We're back. What's up, everybody? Sorry about that. Had a little connection issue. Um, my name's Artie. Uh, welcome to uh, this week's, ins- well, my installment, uh, Wednesday's installment of Age of Quarantine. Um, we're This week, we are. Uh, I have the pleasure of having my old buddy and uh, former bandmate. His name is Alex Barreto. Uh, he's been in 8,000 bands, um, and I'm going to bring him in right now. Hopefully, this will... Uh, and not complicated like. I'm basically outside right now, so I'm very, very cold. Um, oh, shit. Alejandro. What's up, dude? What's up, brother? Hi, hi sweetie. How are you? Can you yeah, hear me? Good, but... Yeah, I can hear you, man. Okay. Um, How you doing? I'm good. I'm really good, actually. Um, awesome. I hope this is like, uh, you know, I haven't heard from you, so this is, you know, I hope I'm like, I, you know, I hope I, I hope I live up to your standards because well, you know, no, we, dude, this is how I catch up with my old friends. So like we just do it on Instagram. So that's cool. Right, cool. <laughs> I've been doing this. We've been doing this for like a fucking year. Um, I just want to do a little. I just want to do a little intro. Um, so Alex uh, played in uh, Chain of Strength, uh, Statue, uh, Inside Out. Um, uh, I mean, World's Fastest Car with me and Walter. Uh, He's now in Excel. I think you're still in Excel, right? I think so, as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, Alien Ant Farm and various other things. He's one of the best musicians I've ever played with. Um, completely mind-blowing. Blo- uh, we'll get to all that eventually. That Alex is, Alex's famous tryout for World's Fastest Car. Um, uh, but uh, yeah. I'd, I'd like to welcome to Age of Quarantine, Alex Barreto, Alejandro, my boy. Fuck yeah. Um, Fuck yeah. my roommate my roommate on tour yes yes <laughs> you know what um and it's funny that you say that because like a roommate on tour is like a huge deal you know what i mean oh yeah like, if you're if you're sleeping next to your like bandmate like that's a huge like oh shit <laughs> my phone's off. that's like a huge like okay i like you i'm your friend we're gonna hang out and we're gonna get you know we're gonna party totally oh, right I- yeah, I mean, I, we'll get into it later. I remember, I remember, I remember both of us. For some reason, we like to take baths. <laughs> you know what? That's okay. I'm okay with baths. Baths are good. <laughs> so okay, so okay, so you know what? Like, um, I know we have an hour, and I know like you and I, we, we we're friends, and you know we like each other, and I think that's obvious to me, and and. Uh, this is kind of a cool opportunity to like keep it real and like sort of like go down that lane or whatever. Um, I'm a fan of you and everything, you know, you've done, like, obviously like you were always looking out for me and helping me out. Like when, when I lived in New York and stuff. And uh, so feel free to like, kind of keep it real and like, really like, like engage with like the past, you know, because. I yeah, think, like, dude, that's like, why I'm we're okay, here, man. Yeah. Like I'm okay with, with you sort of like over romanticizing like us hanging out you know because i think like me you and 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 trifles were we were we were tight you know you know i think it was like like beastie boys we were tight so like like it's okay like go there keep it real you know like i think um you know we never had like a fucking fallout we never had any issues so i i want to like make sure that like you know that like that I convey like my appreciation for you. Like, oh yeah, like, no, dude. Let's just let's just fucking dive in, man. Don't worry about it. It's all yeah. good. This is like like I'm I'm so excited. Like, listen, man. Like, uh, again, like I said, like you're you're one of the best all around musicians I've ever played with, and you know, like uh, it, it it like you know, and a bit of a wild card musician, you know, just like fucking like, hey, man, I'm feeling this right now. Fuck it, you know. It's like that was always a. Yeah. Uh, to, to Shrifle chagrin, but like, you know, it was, uh, yeah, um, I loved it. I thought it was super fun, but I want to, I want to go back now. Like, this is how I usually structure it. I'll go back to yeah. what did like, how, first of all, how did you, you play every instrument. So how did you, like, what was your first instrument? How did you get into playing? How did that lead to the hardcore scene in California? All right. So I was just like a drummer that was, you know, I'm, I'm like you, like I, you're into you were into like heavy metal, right? Like when you were like a teenager, youngster. Yeah, hell yeah. Did you? Okay, so 
I had older brothers and I had older sisters, so I was I'm the youngest, so I was I was the spoiled kid in the family, and um, I got whatever I wanted. I got a bike, I got a you know drum set, whatever. I was like, hey, I want this, and it appeared, you know. So um, I was lucky that I got a drum set pretty young, so I started like rocking the drums, and um, you know fell into the hardcore scene because like. I just forced forced gumped myself into something that was happening, you know, like, like, I know you're not a big youth crew guy, but like, you know, I did definitely like, I was attracted, well, <laughs> cheers. I was attracted to that. You know what? Like you were pretty honest with me and, um, you know, the youth crew scene, maybe it seems like cheesy to you because you're from like a cooler, like long Island scene. But, um, you know, for me, like that was the only thing that was happening in real time. Where like, well, you know, I, I mean, the, Alex, I mean, let's, let's rewind a bit. So, I mean, you were, when you, you were like 13, like, well, how old were you when you went to your first hardcore show? I was 12. I saw was, seven was, seconds in uniform choice when I was 12 and I, and I dragged my cousins that then became the Voodoo Glow Skulls. I, 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 I was the one that kind of like through skateboarding found like hardcore and punk and was like gravitating towards the, you know, the, 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 the kind of youth crew stuff because like that shit was still like relevant like at, at that time you're like 86 I was like 12 or whatever but you know what's funny is um to kind of like kind of like like go back to that that time and, and that energy like I remember like being excited about that but you know by the time I met you like I don't know if you know like my history with Walter because you know Walter was the first guy that actually hung out with one-on-one -on -one, like in his bedroom when he was writing like the girl of biscuit song and you know my first time in New York was, was like hanging out with him and he like kind of, for whatever reason, I was just, you know what, like I'm hanging out with this dude who seems like kind of like the quarterback of that band and then becomes like, you know, many years later, the quarterback of our band, you know, and um, I don't know, like, you know what, I ended up playing bass in Chain of Strength because the drummer of Chain of Strength met me. I used this drum set when I played drums in a band called Against the Wall, and he drove me home because he realized we lived in the same area. And he walked in my bedroom, he saw an SG guitar. I know you're an SG guy because I use your SGs. And he saw my brother's SG, and I like, I'm like, you know, yeah, I play guitar. And then, you know, long story short, I fucking, you know, end up in Chain of Strength. And I know you're a huge fan of Chain of Strength because I just know you love that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what like say what you will like you know what you i don't know if you've ever seen change strength but change strength is, is a loud hardcore band it's not like a wimpy cheesy little like really fucking you know it actually has balls so yeah you know um i think that's why people like the band is because yeah dude that's got i mean there's you know like just because i didn't i just was never straight edge so i didn't really give a shit about that and i kind of always thought that you know especially in new york that a lot of those kids were just like jocks who were into better music, you know? And it like, I, 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 as much as, you know, I'm friends with Ray and Corsell and, and, you know, obviously Wally and, and all those guys that like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I understand the power of what was going on, you know, like it was, it was, it was powerful. It was a powerful movement. The music was powerful. It had a, it had a statement that people could get behind, you yeah. know, it, 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 it totally, you know, I get it. I just don't listen to the records, you know? I'd rather listen to Yes, but that's just oh, me. No, well, that's the thing is, when I met you, I was kind of like confused because we were in our early 20s. I think you and I are pretty much around the same age bracket, right? Yeah. Okay. So you picked me up from the airport and I, I don't really know what I'm getting myself into, you know? You know, obviously, we'll, um, Quicksand and Walter, like obviously that's, those are things that like are really like pretty fucking cool and like, you know, he calls me out of the blue. Hey, you know, come, come, come jam with me. I'm starting the band. And I was like, not into that. Like I wasn't into like, um, post hardcore. I, I was in rockabilly at the time. So like for me, do you remember what I looked like when I came to town? Yeah. You totally look rockabilly. Yeah. Yeah. I look like a, little, a dude from like Los Lobos, right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay. So, you know, well, here's the deal. Like, I didn't know you, but the cool thing about you is like, you just like assumed like I, I was the guy, you know, like I was the third guy because I mean, I think like Walter probably, I don't know, like did Walter just say, hey, 
You know what? What sucks is is I wasn't a drummer anymore because I kind of let that go and I kind of just gravitated towards like yeah. Like, we were we were looking for a drummer. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to hold off on this story because it's it's okay. good, and I okay. I want to I want I want to go through your history first before okay. World's Fastest Car because okay. it is you know like you played in so many legendary bands and you know it's like like chain of so chain of strength like I remember you telling me a story where you went on your first tour. Yeah. on your like summer vacation from from what like ninth grade or something like eighth grade like, like yeah like i was i was 14 and um honestly like uh you know what like i was 14 years old the first time i went to new york and i, li I lied to my parents telling them i was in huntington beach surfing with my friends and a band called against the wall and like they were like okay like i came from like you like you know you you like I come from a good fam, like suburban family, just like you do. Like, you know, I don't yeah. come from like a broken home or anything. Like, um, my parents were, were, were really cool. And, um, they were like, okay, whatever. But I was gone. And, um, yeah, so, um, I was wait for how long, how long did you tell them? How long did I, you leave for? Oh shit. <laughs> Sorry. All right. This is like, uh, I have it propped up high because I didn't want to sit down. That's okay. I've seen, I've seen other interviews where like people are sitting down and I kind of feel like it lacks, like it lacks something. So I'm, I'm like standing up because I want to like, I want to be like fucking like excited about this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Cause um, I don't want to be all like sleepy and shit. All right. So, so how long, how long did you, t how long were you gone for? I was gone for like oh, a couple weeks. And, um, <laughs> and like I said, you know, my, my, I was for some reason sleeping at Dylan uh, Dylan Schreifel's mom's house, and that's why I got to know you know Walter first is because because for some reason like Dylan um, Walter's younger brother was sort of like working for Revelation, helping out. And he does design Chain, work, yeah. Yeah, like Chain of Strength went to uh, you know when we started like coming to the East Coast for, for whatever reason like Dylan was involved with Revelation. And oh, this is gonna fall again. So, um, so what was cool is is like, like I spent a whole day with Walter, just like hanging out with him. And he like, I don't know, we went to go like eat at his friend's house and um, like a, like rad Italian food. And um, but what was cool is like, you know, that kind of planted the seed of of like he was the first New Yorker that um, was in the bands that were like, you know, he was in those bands that were like pretty cool um it was just it was just it was just like two weeks of lying to my parents of like yeah i'm at the beach surfing i don't even have a surfboard but i'm i'm fucking surfing <laughs> you know? um yeah so uh, so that but so so as in general though as a as a 14 year old kid was yeah. that a cool was that a really awesome insane experience you were just like holy shit this is nuts it was because i mean could you imagine like kind of you know when i got into like the youth crew thing like I know you're not a big fan of like youth crew thing, but like for me, like it was like it was the only access to something that was happening, like Youth of Today, Girl of the Biscuits, and all that. Like it was the only thing that was like happening, like right now when I was like, you know, I didn't miss it. It was like I was able to get in. in, in right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Your your timing was really good. Yeah. Right. So because of Chain of Strength um, having good roots with other bands, um, with Justice League, with, um, Ryan Hoffman of Chain of Strength was really good friends with, um, Ray and Purcell. So we kind of got fast tracked, um, to be like in the youth crew scene as Chain of Strength. And I think that like, that was great for me because I just kind of was like, cool, like, this is where I want to be. And, um, you know, I loved it. Like, I love those bands. Like, I, like I was like on board for all that. And like, you know, you like kind of like I was kind of like you know by the time I met you, I was like, like what's this guy all about? Like you were into Oasis, but like <laughs> it seemed yeah. like you were kind of being weird about like because I was like, yeah, I love Morrissey, I love the Smiths, and you were oh. talking, like like James Addiction, Morrissey. But I've been there, done that. That's like, how did you been there, done that? Like wow, was, like, so, did yeah. I really did I really say that? What an asshole! Because I I remember I remember bonding on Morrissey endlessly with you. I, yeah. I, I mean, it was like fucking, I was like, I mean, I think, I think in 1994, I pretty much went through an entire year of just listening to anything Marcy did. So I was like kind of fucking crazy about it, but let's, I don't want to get into that yet. So, okay. so, okay. so 
how did Inside Out happen? How did that all happen? Because that's next in line, right? Well, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, so um, I played drums in this band and Against the Wall, and um, it kind of happened really fast. Wait, you know, like wait, didn't like, you play bass in Chain of Strength though? I played bass in Chain of Strength, but I didn't even have a bass or own a bass. Like I met the bass player of Chain of Strength. I mean, I met the drummer of No For an Answer that like. Chris Bratton was like simultaneously like I was the last member in Chain of Strength. Chain of Strength was in development. He came over because he dropped me off from like a show that I used a drum set because I played drums in a band called Against the Wall. And he was like, dude, he came into my room and he saw me like with an SG and he was like, holy shit, you got a fucking Gibson SG. Like, can you play that fucking thing? And I like, I started rocking, you know, just whatever. And like, he's like, dude, like, you know, Chain of Strength, I have this ba other band you know, do you play bass? And I was like, no. And, and and so I borrowed a friend's bass and like ended up just in Chain of Strength. And Chain of Strength like just quickly got going into like, you know, underground show business. And like, I was like playing CBGBs as a fucking 14 year old. And, you know, it was, it was awesome. So I think what was hard to like, you know, at the same time, like because I played drums, you know, if you were a good drummer, like, I think I was pretty good. Um, you were like instantly like scouted. And, and so Zach De La Rocha uh, played guitar in hard stance, you know, and before he sang in, in, in a set out, like he basically was like, dude, I want to be your friend. Like, come check out my band. So he gave me a cassette tape. And at that time, like Inside Out and uh, No For Answer were kind of like in Orange County hardcore, like alumni. And um, because I was friends with Chris joining Chain of Strength, I was in that world. And um, I joined Hard Stance, which was Zach Taylor Rocha writing all the songs and kind of quarterbacking that band. Okay, see, I didn't know this. I didn't know that. So, it, like, so Hard Stance was sort of Inside Out before Inside Out. Right. I mean, Hard, Hard Stance is kind of like pre inside out and like i know that you know what heart uh inside out is a lot of people don't know what heart stance was did heart stance put out any records i don't i don't really yeah, know yeah yeah um oh there you go okay yeah i mean and you yeah. play drum you play drums on that dude i fucking rock the drums a big time <laughs> yeah um yeah you know what what's crazy is like you know what like Zach was the song that like the pre okay so Zach was like the pre the like the songwriter dude and like um I was you know I was just like like that's that's me on the drums right there I don't know if you oh yeah that. there he is I've seen that picture before yeah <laughs> um, and like I don't know like this just came out recently on Indecision Records but like you know there's there's your buddy Zach on guitar oh uh, yeah there we go all right. So, you know, the homie was fucking, okay, and there's me with the SSD sweats on the drums right there. <laughs> All right, so, you know what, like, I'll just, I'll just say, like, the dude was obviously, like, like, super fucking legitimately talented and writing all the songs, and he would coach the singer of Hard Stance how to phrase the vocals. And then I saw him sing um, with, like, a, kind of like a, a pre-version of, well, the first version of Inside Out. And then, um, long story short, I basically was, like, hanging out with this dude, I'm like, you know what, you're writing all these songs, you're the guitar player, you're fucking a rad singer, you need to be on the mic, like, you, like, let's do whatever that is, and, and then, um, I was lucky that, um, I jammed with Vic DeCara of, uh, Beyond, and, um, you know, because I had access to New York dudes, like, Vic DeCara, like, I was jamming with Vic DeCara because, um, me and the well, he, had, he had moved. He had moved out to uh, to California, though, right? He moved to California to go to college, and his family moved out here. And his parents were rich, so like basically, like like he had a car, and he was you know able to like come hang out with us. And like we were like like the Chain of Strength guys were Victor Carr's first friends in California, and um, he came to jam with us because he, we were. Um, like the drummer of Chain of Strength, Chris Bratton, and the guitar player of Chain, one of the guitar players, uh, Brian Hoffman, um, were jamming with Vic. And I was just kind of like a fill-in bass player because we were um, creating a project for Dave Smalley from that band, DYS. And, um, of course. Yeah, uh, Dagnasty. Dagnasty. 
Yeah. And even though like like he kind of pushed out and wasn't like on board for that project, we like I that's where I met Vic and that's where I realized like Vic was like amazing and um so I kind of like got to know like this dude cuz I obviously I saw like you know Beyond and 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 they were awesome. And um Kenny Strange played with Beyond and um and so so I told Zach De La Rocha like dude I know this dude who lives in town now. His name is Vic Takara. We should we should start inside out. Fuck hard stamps. Let's just kind of. I want you on the mic. I know this rad guitar player. Let's just get that going because that's going to be like serious shit, you know. And 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 I was right. Like I was the one that was like kind of like, hey, you know, we should do this. And we tried it, and, and sure enough, like it was fucking awesome. So that's the inside. So out. so wait. So it was uh, okay. Like first question is, how old were you at this point? Fifteen. Okay. And next question is, with Inside Out, was like was Zach still writing everything the way that he did in Hard Stance, or was it like Vic writing the riffs and both? It was all of us. You know, like at this point, like Zach was um, like. I lived an hour away from Zach and he would come cause he worked in the area further from where he lived to work. So he would spend the night at my house and sleep on the floor and we would jam just guitar, like a shitty Randall, like practice amp, like, and my brother's like rad SG, but like a shitty amp, but like, and me and, you know, my drum set, like all my bands that I was in, in high school, like chain statue, hard stance, um, fucking uh inside out we all like like my parents put up my family put up with so much fucking shit like you know what they were trying to watch like telemundo spanish tv <laughs> and like there's marshall stacks in my bedroom and and you know what like you know what like we were like playing full volume and you know my parents my family was so wow. cool i had the master bedroom in our home and um you know what to be honest like that's like never happened. Wait, 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 wait. You had the yeah. master bedroom. That's some spoiled ass youngest kid shit. You know what? I was, <laughs> I was, I was fucking spoiled, dude. Like, like I got everything. Like I, I got the cool BMX bike. I got the skateboards. I got the fucking drum set. I got the whatever. I got the car. I was the youngest kid, and like my parents just like were like able to like kind of do that. So I fucking, you know. I what? love it. So so inside out is clicking. This is all yeah. working. You yeah. guys, uh, like, w when do you get to the recording of the record and like, and where did it go wrong? Like, where did it go away? You know, it never really went wrong. You know what it was is, is we went on tour. We went on tour with Quickstand and Shelter and the guitar player, Victor Cara. Oh, yeah. He was. Um, <laughs> he became a monk. Well, he was like super. Um, you know, which I respect, you know, like he was like, I love it. And I love everybody in all these bands, but you know, to be honest, like he, he ditched us to join shelter, which is like a bummer because like, you know, shelter versus inside out, like, because he ditched us for shelter, I lost interest in, 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 you know, inside out. But, um, like I kind of definitely like segued into statue, which I don't know if you know about statue. Of course. So I was going to get into this now because statue, okay. statue to me and to uh, some of my my friends and bandmates and ex bandmates and like, whenever a statue comes up, people are always like it's it's to me up there with one of the most underrated revelation bands ever. Like why? it's uh, why is it underrated? Like tell me why? Why is it underrated to you? Because well. It should have been, it should have been bigger than it was. It should have been quicksand big. You know what I mean? Like well, it was, know, I mean, I know you were still in high school, but like, so statue was. statue was like your thing though, right? It was, I was, I was like the cat. I was like the bat, you know, the fucking like, like I was the, I was the captain. I was the, you know, it was my thing. It was, it was my baby. It was, I was the, you know, the quarterback. Yeah. You know what, you know what though? I was too shy to, to be a singer. And that was the thing is like, you know, like I was so like comfortable with just being the bass player in Chain of Strength or the drummer and Inside yeah, Out. Yeah, it's funny. Like, I've never, I've, I don't think I've ever heard you sing. Well, you it's, know what? 
I have, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I am super shy. So I think like once we started playing shows, even though people like the band, I never felt comfortable in that role as a singer. Right. I know. But like, I mean, I never heard you like, like I'm talking about like when we would hang out, you know how like yeah. when, when, when you would put the Smiths on or something, I would just yeah. nonstop. I, that's all I would do is sing. And, yeah. and, you, and you would like, you never sang along to anything, which I always kind of thought about. I was just like, I know he was a singer in a band and it's just kind of weird. But you know what, you know what, that's the thing is like, for me, like, um, I realized through that band because, Statue was a band in my high school where, like, you know, we, we played the high school keggers, the parties, and it was different in my little hick town to, like, be the big deal. Yeah. Nobody knew, like, what, like, what hardcore was or what anything was. So, like, it was, it was okay. Like, I felt comfortable being, like, the big fish in a small pond. But in the real, in the real scene, you know what? Like, I just didn't have the confidence to, like, really, like, to really do it so like i kind of almost sabotaged the band because i didn't want to keep going because i just was like you know what i'm not like a look at me kind of person you know i mean i, I don't know if like no you definitely aren't no i'm not like a kind For of sure. like hey, like like fucking i'm i'm trying to get buff on steroids like no you don't not. you don't have you, you don't have front man vibes mm -mm. that's not that's not your thing but uh, you know oh. like like you know you you definitely impressed me because like you were quick, like post World's House's car, like you were quick to like really like go that way. Where like I was like, no, like that's the last direction. Like I'm trying to like, like stay on guitar, stay on bass. Where like you were, you were quick to like go to, like, to vocals. Well, I was writing. I was writing the whole time we were in World's House's car, but it, you know, in like and you know, trying to give riffs to Walter, which was impossible because he had like 45 new riffs every fucking day. But like um. So I want to like well, let's let's get to world's fastest car now. Like so so statue calls it a day. You you yeah. sabotage you self sabotage statue, and 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 what happens from statue to world's fastest car? Because I don't think you have any release material. No. In between that. I kind of was over it because like when I was in high school, all those bands that I we just talked about were like simultaneous and. Um, I needed, a, I needed a fucking break because, like, to be honest with you, it was like being, like, a child actor. Like, all of a sudden, like, I fell into these roles where, like, everybody's, like, on, on my dick. But then after a while, by the time I'm, like, 18 or 19, I realized, like, like I need to figure out, like, who the fuck, like, Alex Barreto is. You know, I need, to, I need to go, you know what? Like, I need to, like, kind of find out, like, what who I am, you know, like, as a person not related to music. And, um... And I think by the time I met you, like I was able to do that. And so, um, I would, I, yeah, I, so, so, like, so, get, yeah. like, so, so we fast forward. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to give the preface to the world's fastest car story because it's, uh, it's a, it's, it's, it's a good one. Um, so I'm sitting at my girlfriend's house one day yeah. in 1995 and there's phone rings and yeah. my girlfriend's, uh, Jen's m grandmother, I remember her comes in the room and she's like, there's a guy named Walter on the phone for you. And I'm like, uh, okay. And it's, it's Wally. And he's like, Hey man, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how the fuck did you get this number? And he's like, Oh, I talked to Marcos from Marcos Siega and blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. Whatever. Cause I was in bad trip. I, I think I wasn't in bad trip anymore, but anyway, so I was still in Monitor matter. So I get this call and it's just like, you know, it's a singer of my favorite band, it's my favorite singer ever of my favorite band who I was friends with, but like, you know, peripherally. And he like, he's like, yo, look, I'm going to break up quicksand. I want to start a band with you. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this is fucking Looney Tunes. I mean, I remember hanging up the phone and being like, holy shit. And we had made plans for me. He's like, I want you to play bass. So similar story to when you played bass. And I was just like, okay, cool. So I, the next day I went out, I bought a bass at uh, mm -hmm. Guitar Center, I, I, but I, I returned it two days later, but you know, they only had one lefty bass. So I drove out to Stony Brook to Walter's parents' house, played with him a little bit. And, and uh, he was like, okay, I think we should do this. And I was like, all right, cool, whatever. And then they went on tour with Civ and Texas is the Reason. Mm -hmm. And then I think they broke up in like September or something. Like he said he was gonna quit. 
you know, like whatever went on with those guys. And I'm glad yeah. they're all, I'm glad they're all friends now because that shit yeah. is so, so stupid. But like yeah. the, um, so we started playing almost immediately and, I, and, uh, and it was like rehearsal was, I don't know, six days a week. It was fucking Looney Tunes. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of went through it. I moved to the city cause I was living on Long Island at the time. And I would say, you know, like Sammy was playing for a little bit in the beginning and then we were looking for a drummer and yeah. because Siv went on tour and Sam was, was occupied. Sammy Siegler, this is sorry. And um, so we started calling people in John, uh, John Stanier from helmet tried out. Uh, yeah. There were a bunch of people who tried out and one of the people that Walter approached me about, he's like, I know this guy, Alex Barreto. He's fucking great. Like I'm going to have him fly out here and like, we're going to try him out. And obviously now we get to the point where I pick you up at the airport. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you and I totally bond on the way to, you know, I, I think we might've even gone, uh, I think we went to Walter's apartment if I remember correctly, yeah. but um, yeah. yeah. So, so that whole experience for me was, um, I, I mean, I don't know. It was very life altering, um, mm -hmm. very difficult, uh, yeah. but also like, super fun and like like it just like a big adventure so yeah. just to give a little background so walter was being kept on by his record label so he was signed to island def jam and universal publishing or not universal uh, bmg i think whatever anyway and so alex and i were sort of walking like i was already there but you were kind of walking into this weird situation so alex shows up to to try out as the drummer mm -hmm. and you sit down behind a kit and you play yeah. and it's pretty cool. And like, we're having fun. Mm -hmm. And you know, Walter's kind of like looking at me, like I could always tell with, with Wally, like he's like, ah, I'm not really sure about this. And yeah. you picked up Walter's guitar. Yeah. And started playing mm -hmm. and Walter's face is fucking lit up. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, he's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. We were like, okay, we just found, we just found our, second guitar player because originally he didn't want a second guitar player but because you worked out so well we got yeah. it and then eventually we got eric stams to play drums right. and uh and then we rehearsed six days a week and walter showed up late every single day and i didn't <laughs> you know what like let me just say like thank god that you were such a nice guy and like really like kind of we're very grounded and you know what like even though walter is kind of a flicky dude like um i really kind of knew like his ways so getting into the situation and getting into the fold you know you were a good anchor to it's good that you were in in the band because um you know i felt like us three were like shepherd barreto trifles like that shit was working and i felt like that was a band you know Sam's, you know, the drummer, it wasn't... Yeah, wasn't, Eric, didn't, Eric didn't fit in. He was a great drummer. Yeah, he didn't fit in, but, like, for us, like, I felt like, you know, like, the Beastie Boys, like, I remember, like, walking around town, and, and I felt like we were, we were a band. And um, I felt like a band with you and Walter. And, like, you know, you guys are all fucking... You guys are fucking sexy. And, <laughs> um, and I think, like, you know what? Like, like, I was, like, I was really, like, excited about everything. And um, you know what, like the songs, well, I don't know if you know this, but like him and I really, really had good chemistry on guitars. Together. Oh yeah, big time. And we had written like riffs together where like I would do the highs and he would do the lows. And um, I don't know if you know. Well, this. I mean, you're, you were a, technically a way better guitar player. And, but you know, Walter is Walter. And like, I, 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 was, I answered a Facebook comment today where somebody was talking about Walter and his tone on mm -hmm. slip and it was like oh that, that tone they should make it a preset on something and i was like you could never sound like him because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what the dude plays he could play any guitar any amp anything mm -hmm. he always sounds exactly the fucking same it's just his hands the way mm -hmm. he plays the, like those light picks he uses like mm -hmm. the whole fucking like thing that he does i'm gonna do this but like the the uh it, it was a uh, it, it was I, 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 I always talk about World's Fastest Cars. I called it, I called it uh, Wally College because yeah. I really learned 
I learned the, uh, a lot about songwriting. I also learned yeah. a lot about the major label, uh, the music industry. And I also learned a lot about how not to run a band. And, you know, it was well, like, well, he, well, he was going through so much. You well, know? Let me stop there. Like, like, do you feel like you kind of sympathize with him when you say that? Because I feel like, yeah. I, because you I, know what? Like, to, to be in a band like Quicksand in the underground for appreciation, but not mainstream appreciation, I kind of feel like we had to be a part of his anxiety yes. to like prove himself. Yeah. And I mean, I, like, I think about, but Alex, think about the amount of pressure he was under. You know, yeah, like that was yeah, that yeah. was the thing that I saw. I saw, oh, I saw, I saw a right. dude who was like, who was like, under so much pressure to be like this next big thing, right. and like, and he he handled it really, really, really well. I mean, I, I, right. and, and I, you know, we, you know, we, I mean, I don't, I don't even remember how many fucking songs we recorded. We probably recorded like seventy-five songs, you easily, and what? they just you disappear into the ether. You well, know, like, the thing is, like, you know, to, like, kind of, like, look, like, like, you were his ride or die. I wasn't. I was the dude from California who was, like, costing him a lot of money to be there. And I kind of felt like I was a stressful component, you know, for him. And, and you know, I, I Well, did, on a personal level, yes. Absolutely. You know I mean? Yeah. Because, like, right away, like, he had to, like, pay for, for my – he had to pay – for my living expenses, like right away, um, you know, because like basically, like you were a little bit more advanced than me. Like I was not in my comfort zone. You, you had a job. You worked at that record store. I didn't work at all. I had no income, so he had to take care of me. And you know what? Like when you guys decided, you, his girlfriend, you know, Vicky, we're gonna adopt this Mexican kid from fucking California. He's gonna join our band. Like. I was like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll let you guys adopt me. But you know what? I'll, at some point, like, there's an expiration date on that adoption. Like, you know what? Like, when the band became stressful, you know, it's like when, when we had shitty scenarios with, like, drummers, like, I kind of felt like I had to take the hit because I was a stressful component. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, you're totally right. And, and I, I obviously, I'm, I wasn't a stressful component. I was kind of like along for the ride and doing, you know, I was, I was kind of absorbing everything around what was going on and also like sort of playing in between. It's right. funny because like, it, it's the amount of chatter that still goes on about world's fastest car is really interesting to me. And, you know, it's, it's a shame that those recordings have kind of gone, you know, into like the ether on what, what exists is kind of shitty cassette versions, but you know, like we did, you know, we recorded a shit ton of stuff. And then the Japanese tour happened. And this is, it's actually a really fucking crazy story that I don't think a lot of people know. You know, it's like, so we went to Japan and that's where yeah. me and you, me and you totally bonded in Japan. That was super fun. And we would listen yeah. to, we would listen to the Smiths on my little tape recorder. And I, you were the first person to point out to me. He's like, yo, Marcy can't sing, dude. <laughs> and I was like, and I'm listening to it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. He's flat. He's flat on everything. It's like he's yawning. And, and he's like yawning. <laughs> but you know what? Though? You know, you know, I'm a huge fan of the, of Morrissey and the Smith. You know that. But like, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, okay, so you know what? To take a, a quick, quick. Okay, we'll get back to World's Fastest Car. What's up with you? How how are you like a Long Island fucking Hessian kid into <laughs> Yes or whatever the fuck you were into? And and when I by the time I meet you, you're into Oasis, and like I don't know like. Like you were like Britpop, like fucking. Oh yeah. And like you know what? Well, like, I th I feel like a lot. I feel like a lot of explain, a lot of the hardcore kids got me, into that explain, at that time. Explain, explain that, like, kind of like go for like, like, because you were kind of giving me like the third degree of like, oh, like you were in Chain of Strength, like <laughs> that's fucking cheesy. And I'm like, well, who the fuck are you? You know, like. Yeah, like, I'm nobody. Yeah, seriously. Like, who the fuck are you? No, no, it was it was a. Uh, it was about a girl. It was about Jen. She introduced me to Ride and My Buddy Valentine and Lush and all that shit. And then we were together when Oasis came out mm -hmm. and we went and saw Oasis in tiny little clubs. We saw yeah. them at Maxwell's and Wetlands and shit like that. And, you know, and then we just dove into the Britpop scene, you know, Blur and Pulp yeah. and really, yeah, really that. obscure shit. 
And uh, so, you know, it was, it was uh, really more about a girl, but I, I really love that music. It's, you know, anything that's sort of Beatlesque, I'm gonna, well, boy, adorable, thank you, John, uh, Sapa 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 Sinos. Adorable is the best. Um, but, like, but like, yeah, that was, that was kind of the excuse behind that. But like with, you know, I, I, I apologize if I came off like a dick about the youth crew thing, but no. you know, like it, for me, like I, I really, I really like at that point in my life, and mm-hmm. I think in Walter's life and like, you know, like all of, I, I felt like we kind of melded on the idea that songwriting should be the focus and not this sort of like hardcore energy thing. You know, it was like, it was right. about writing songs and, and, you know, Walter was under the pressure of being the next Billy Corgan, the next Kurt Cobain. Yep. And yep. I got, I got to say, you know, I, I, the dude lived up to it. Like the shit that he wrote was fucking unreal. So I want to tell a story. Mm-hmm. Real, not not real quick because it's a long story. But okay. when so we get back from Japan, right? Yeah. And we had that show in Philadelphia, and then we were supposed to play New Music Seminar or CMJ opening for Orange Nine Millimeter at CB yeah. the following yeah. day. So yeah. we get to that morning, right? Mm-hmm. So Walter, instead of playing the set that we played in Japan, Walter yeah. was so prolific he literally wrote an entire new set in two weeks and but he didn't have any lyrics or song titles for the songs Mm. so (laughs) so if i don't know if you remember that morning we went and rehearsed at 11 o'clock in the morning at american studios before we drove to philly Mm -hmm. where walter actually drove and he didn't have a license it like fucking we, we we're like practicing and eric our drummer is going like i don't know what is like these, what these song titles are like right. he couldn't he like he couldn't correlate a song title to what the actual song sounded like so we get to the show and it's totally sold out it's a kyber pass in philly and i think joe basso who was our a and r guy at def jam uh island def jam came down and we were just like we get on stage first of all i think we oh i forget what we opened with i think it might have been used for glue so we open and you break a string within, I don't know, 10 seconds of the first song. So you're busy like fucking doing it. So the show is already kind of feeling like weird. Yeah. We get to the second song and mm. Eric is just look, Eric looks at me and he goes, I don't know what song this is. And mm. I go, okay. And he just counts it off. One, two, three, four. Doom, tsh, do, do, tsh. And Walter turns around and he's flipping the fuck out, flipping out. And you're like, you're just like, you're like, dude, what the fuck's going on? I remember you leaning in like, and I, I remember like, Walter's like, start it again. Does it again. One, two, three, four, dun, dun, dun. and Eric's just looking at me and I, I just go, everybody mm. shut the fuck up. Play arranged marriages now. Mm. <laughs> and we just like did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. And I think he forgot like three more songs mm. on that, during that set. And mm. I had never seen Walter so distraught. I remember mm-hmm. sitting in the van after the show, because Vicky came yeah. down too, and yeah. Walter was just like, we're canceling the show tomorrow. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and, and like, that was, that was like the turning point. That was like the moment where we were like, because we was, thought, we thought mm-hmm. like Use for Glue, we had recorded Use for Glue, and I forget what the B-side was going to be, and that was going to come out as a seven inch on Revelation. Yeah. And then we were going to, we were going to rock the rest of it um on island def jam whenever we found a producer and stuff like that but like i like when we got back from japan i thought we were like this is it this is going to happen and wow that whole thing has happened so I, I, for anybody's watching there is a video of us playing in japan uh mm-hmm. on youtube that's actually really good um yeah. and uh um i don't think any anything of the u.s show exists but oh, anyway okay. so the next day, I remember we went we went back up to New York, and you, me and you went down to CB's, yeah, to to that show, yeah, and and it was like everybody's like, when are you guys going on? And we're like, oh, we're not playing. I remember and Eric that, yeah. Eric was out of the band. He got thrown out of the yeah. band that night. That, yeah. And then I I think that's when we brought in uh, Special Ed, from Shades Apart. <laughs> that was you know what? Okay, so I know you kind of like really like went down like a super like really like really really crazy like um 
rabbit hole there, but like, I'll just say this. Okay. From my, from my point of view, the Philadelphia show with, um, all, was it? The was co-stars. It? Post- Post cars, so like the, the the luscious Jackson man, right? Yeah. Cool chicks, right? Like awesome. The super cool. Okay, so we kind of had like a bad show, you know. Fuck it, you know. Admit it. That's one of the worst shows I've ever played. Yeah, for, but you know what though? As bad as it was, like, you know what though? I'm not saying like it's Walter's fault, but you know what? Like, had we just fucking did what our thing, because dude, like. When we played Japan, even though like some of those songs were just kind of like a little bit like a little bit like not the greatest like you know statement of like musical like chops or whatever, but like if we had just fucking played like some of those songs just for just to get just to kind of connect like when me you and and, and Shrifles were playing like uh, in Japan, like we had a chemistry and I think like. If we had kind of played on that, you know, what we had, because we were friends, and I, I know, like, the dr- we never had a drummer that had the same, you know, the same, like, like we weren't, like, you know, we were from the same route, but for some reason, like, we just couldn't get a drummer on the same fucking channel. But, like, when we were playing, like, every point has, you know, every, what is it, what's the song? Every- every, everything has its point today. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when I'm just like taking my time, taking my fucking shirt off or whatever, like, and just kind of like, kind of groove in, like, dude, that's chemistry, you know, when you can take your time and kind of take off your fucking jacket and just kind of like play some riffs. Like, I think like, like that, that is, that is showing the like, like confidence and like, you can kind of fucking, you know, like really just kind of display like what you're all about. And I think we did that in Japan. And I think, because, and you know what, I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to say like, be, you know, we were stressed out because we had to prove something to like the A&R guy. Fuck the A&R guy. If we would have just did our thing, we would have fucking been rad. But because we were trying to prove to the A&R guy that we're cute and we're sexy, you know what, fuck that. <laughs> If we would have just fucking been, yeah, but Alex, it was it was a different time, and you know, like like I, I definitely like it, again that that record deal wasn't ours. It was it was Walter's, and you know, like he he had to deal with all that stuff. And you know, after I got signed to Geffen in two thousand two, you know, like I I kind of understood a lot more about what he was going through at that time. You know, like when when people are just blowing smoke up your ass constantly. And you, you and you're just you know like did you ever meet Joe Basso? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so Walter. I love Joe Basso. He's really cool. Well, well, he took me up there. You know, we he rollerbladed. I skateboarded. We went up there a couple times. And Joe Basso was like, "Hey, there's like this Beatles song that like nobody ever know, like nobody knows. Like you guys should like steal the song." And I'm like, "What? So, like steal a Beatles song? Like I don't know. Like I just think like." <laughs> Like I was a little bit like maybe having a little bit of a delusional, you know, like, like uh, influence. And I think, you know, how many demos did World Fastest Car do? Oh my God. Well, that was the thing about it. Like my understanding is that the demos needed to be approved by like eight people. Like it was like ludicrous. How does it was fucking ridiculous. And the only, the only ones that went, the only ones that got through were used for glue and Mm -hmm. whatever other song. And it was like, yeah, yeah, you guys, you put out your, you know, we were going to do the Sib thing where we put out a record on Revelation and then come out on a major label. But like, you know, it, it, the whole thing was funded by Island Def Jam. And, you know, look, I, I like, I, I, you know, it maybe at the time, I definitely didn't have the greatest of positive vibes from the whole experience at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. I now, you know, but it didn't take me long. You know, obviously I started our Type 11 and and Walter signed me to his label that he had started with Pincus and and mm-hmm. Sam, and you know so I was like I was very much like still in the fold with all of that, and 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 it, you know it, it felt good. I mean after you left the band, mm-hmm. uh, you know what we played with Sammy for a while. We were you know it, it was super weird. Like my my only memories of that time were actually that sick of it all and shudder to think 
practice next to us. <laughs> so one day, one day I would get like a weird Shudder to Think song. And the next day it was clobbering time. But like, you know, it, it, it never really changed. You know, you know, the, the only thing that was constant about that whole band was that Walter showed up late to rehearsal every single time. <laughs> well, let me, okay, so let me just say this, okay, you know, I know, I know we're, we're, we're about to run out of time. No, 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 we, no, we can go over an hour, it's fine. But you know like, I, let me just say but, this, because, you know what, like, you have, um, you know, I, I really, res like, I really, like, I like you as a person, I like you as a friend, um, I think, you know, you looked out for me, like, like, if I ran out of money, like, you would pay for me. Like, I think, like, you know, you're a good guy. And I, I want to make sure that, like, I don't really, like, this is not about, like, really, like, one band. Like, you know, I know we're supposed to talk about, like, all my bands and stuff. But, like, like we can we can talk about, like, the other bands I play in. But, you know, what? like, like for me, this is an opportunity for me to, like, talk to you. And, like, I really, I really admire you because not only did you like kind of navigate through like that time when we were like in our early 20s but like you know you you've really like you know you kept going singing in bands getting signed and like you know creating businesses with sing by this which is like super rad and i played you know excel played at your club and um you know like it sucks that like in an hour, it doesn't just feel like enough time to really like kind of celebrate like, like I really think highly of you. And I don't know oh, if you know dude, Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And, and you know, and, and, and I, I, you know what's wild is that like, I, I can't believe you play in XL because I fucking loved XL when I was a kid. <laughs> Excel, it's dude. so wild. Well, but it's just, just a testament. Now, honestly, Alex, it's a testament to how fucking good you are. Like you're such a sick musician. Like I, I like I rarely like when, you know, in, in all honesty, like to, to everybody out there, there were there were bass lines that you wrote for me, and even played. I remember remember uh, when we we uh, you know you know I, I I was I was solid on stage and stuff like that, but I was still kind of learning my shit. And yeah. you uh, we we recorded at Snake Sabo's house in mm -hmm. New Jersey, yeah. uh, Snake Sabo from Skid Row. And he had the, he had the board from uh, the Hit Factory that Back in Black was recorded on. It's so sick. Yeah. And and he had the kegerator in his refrigerator. Yeah. It, that was cool. And I just <laughs> slept on the couch all day and just like drank. That was super fun. Me but too. Uh, um, I remember I remember that weirdly because Phil Anselmo had OD'd during that time when we were there, and cool. Sebastian Bach quit the band while we were there as well, and he faxed his resignation letter while I was sitting in this computer room, which is so funny. Like, and I asked Sebastian Bach about that, like, cause he did a book signing at Vitus. And I was like, yo man, I was sitting in Snake Sabo's computer room when you faxed your uh, resignation letter, goes, which time? And I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, whatever. And he's like, yeah. he's like, you know what? He, then, he, then he goes into this, he goes, you know what I did? I took a shit on Snake's front lawn. And I'm like, that's just weird. Like, <laughs> why would you tell me that? Well. You know what's crazy is you know what like and you know like you bring you bring that up and like like to me like hanging out at Snake Sabo's house as a Latino dude was really weird because like it was a very racist vibe. I don't know if you like, you can kind of like I didn't pick up on that. I mean, you might have said something to me about it, but you know I what? was pretty I was pretty drunk most of the time. So yeah. I know, which is I wish I would have been drinking more. <laughs> but um, you know what's weird is like, remember like that like shaved head like skinhead guy who was like like doing you know remember when we were tracking the like the his like kind of like like house guy was like that was running the board. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get into that because that's irrelevant. But you know what? Let's get back to um, let's get back to like when you were thinking about talking to me. You know what? What was it about me that like made you think about like wanting to do this this podcast? And, well, like, it, it, it uh, you know a lot. Well, besides being able to like talk to an actual other member of World Fastest Car, which is like, yeah. you know, uh, it, it you know, the band is such a fucking mystery in Walter's lore. Um, besides that, yeah, um, people kept bringing up statue. To mm -hmm. tell you the truth, 
Okay. And and it just like it was kind of reverberating around my head, mm -hmm. and I was just like, "Fuck!" I was like, "I should like I'm not very good at like realizing who I should interview. I'm terrible at it. I'm just kind of yeah. like, oh, who should I interview? You know, like there's the obvious people. You know, like I didn't even get to interview Walter on this thing. Fucking, I think Chris or Dave did, which was mm -hmm. bullshit. Assholes. Fuck you, Chris. Fuck you, Dave. But like well, fucking, yeah. you know, well, like you know, so so. I, I get you, the opportunity to, to talk to my friends who gotcha. I've had these great life experiences with. And that's yeah. what I, I felt like we could bring to this whole thing. I thought it would be fun to like, to, to, to talk about it because I don't think nobody's, we've never talked about it in public ever, ever. Yeah. I, I get asked about it every once in a while. And I'm just like, yeah, it was cool. And, but you know, it's like, it, it was such a formative experience for my life. And I endlessly thank Walter for it. Be, you know, like now I, I was, I was a bit bitter at the beginning, but you know, like I, I think like any dumb 24 year old is going to be like, Oh, fuck that shit. Blah, 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 blah. And you know, people are like, what are you crazy? You're quitting that band. I'm like, yeah. fuck it, man. Like I, I, I got better things to do, you know? And, and, and so does Walter and Walter needs to go on and do his shit, you know? And mm -hmm. like, and he did it. it and it actually made me proud when I heard all those songs on the Rival Schools records and throughout his solo career and shit, like he, he had eventually put out quite a bit of it. And those are his songs and they're fucking great. You know, like fucking fantastic. Is it, is it, is it hard for you to sort of like kind of cross that? Like, you know, you, you were, you were a part of something that you really value and then like, and then like you weren't a part of it. And then like, then you have to kind of like be like an outsider, like viewing it and being like, oh man, like I kind of could have put a part of that. Like, is that sort of like fuck up your, no, your like your life? No, bec no because yeah. I think I, I feel like I, I was creating myself and, and doing things that I really wanted to do. And yeah. uh, I, 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 no, not at all. Like I, and Walter was good enough to like, you know, let my bands open for rival schools a bunch of times and, and, yeah. you know, it was like, I, I was actually super happy. I'm a fan, you know, like yeah. at, at the end of the day, I joined the band as a fan. I left the band as a fan, you know, like I, I remember seeing them on the Deftones tour on uh, Quicksand mm -hmm. when they reunited after World's Fastest Car had broken up and mm -hmm. it was just a fucking train wreck. But mm -hmm. like, you know, and I was standing there going like, fuck man, this could have been us. You know, this could have been us. We could have been doing this and it, and it would have been killer, but you know, we just, we, you know, we get through life and we have our opportunities. I mean, like, I, 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 I want to talk a little bit like real quick about um, what you do. I mean, so you went on to play an alien ant farm and uh, you play an Excel now. Mm -hmm. um, but w what I'm a little bit interested in is what you do for guitar companies. So you, you work for ESP now, right? I do. And I, I work for GNL which is like, you know, um, you know, I got one of those. I got an ASAT lefty. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I worked for GNL and I worked for Fender and um, I started at Fender and um, I learned kind of like, I kind of learned, you know what? Like it was one of those things where like I forest gumped myself into like that, like whole career, you know? Um, are we past the, uh, um, the yeah, hour? We'll, we'll, we'll cut it in a couple of minutes, but like this, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to finish. I'm going to wrap it up with what you're doing now. So, okay. So, um, obviously like, okay. So I'll just say real quick, like, um, like before I came out to meet you, um, I met like, you know, I was, I was in bands with a couple of like pretty, pretty mainstream people now. Um, before and after World Tusk's car, I was in a band with Travis Barker, and we. Oh, I didn't know that. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Did I, started... How did I forget that? <laughs> well, you know what? Um, I'm bringing it up because I kind of have. There's a lot of shit that I know that you don't know about, and um, I played in a band with him that I sang and played guitar, and um, he played the drums. It was a three piece, and it was straight up like kind of like. Descendants, Dagnasty, but like a little bit more like 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 aggressive. 
Yeah. And um, we played shows. We played shows with a, a band called uh, Kara's Flowers that became Maroon 5. Yes, yes, and, yes, yes. Yeah. And um, so, so wait, so wait, was this before he was in Blink? This was before, yeah. Like when I met Travis, I met him through a mutual friend. And to like kind of make a long story short, before I moved to New York, like um, even though I was like a rockabilly guy, like um, I met him and we wrote songs together. And because I don't know for whatever reason, like long story short, like like I was able to write songs and sing. So we had a band called Boxcar Racer. Oh and yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And we played a couple shows, and 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 then I left to New York, and I met you, and you know played in a band with you and Walter. But like when I came back, we we, we picked up where we left off, and we actually played a couple show, no, more shows with like you know like like Kara's Flowers, which was um, like Marine Five or whatever. Um, so, um, but yeah, like like I I kind of just definitely was like. Um, you know, like making um, this weird, like kind of like melodic hardcore, and with 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 Travis, and 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 then he joined Blink, and then he was gone. Um, he was in a band called the Aquabats, and they toured with oh, yeah. Blink, and he filled in for Blink One Eight Two because their drummer like bailed or whatever for like some personal shit, and then like and then like he called me and was like, "Hey, I'm in Blink One Eight Two. And then I was just like, whatever, like, I didn't really like follow, you know, a lot of that. So I wasn't really thinking, oh, whatever. Like I wasn't ambitious with like show business, but, um, but yeah, like the only thing that like I was doing before I met you was playing with Travis Barker. And so um, wait, so wait, I mean, Travis Barker is an incredible drummer. It, like I, I, we had blankets at St. Vitus and I've never seen any, I've never seen anybody with more security guys around him. <laughs> wow. he, he was like a hip hop guy. It was it was kind of yeah. weird. Like yeah. he didn't talk to anybody. He just walked in, played drums. But he's fucking really good. Jesus Christ, fantastic. He was, he, was, he was always that guy. Like even then, like um, even when I met him, like before I met you, like in '95 or whatever. Like um, I met him through a mutual friend, and like for some reason, like he was always like really fast and really like peppy drummer. Um. We're from the same kind of really shitty, like outskirts of LA towns. Like I'm in mine, like Marino Valley, and he's in his, uh, 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 Fontana. And we had a mutual friend that brought us together. So before I met you, him and I just like jammed. And by the time I came back to California after, you know, the world's fastest car days, he, he was like, hey, you know, like um, he was playing in a band called um, the Aquabats. But like we still played, we got together again, and um, we played a couple shows. And um, wait, so yeah, Boxcar also, Racer, but Boxcar Racer put out records, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't in that version because he kind of like stole okay. the name, and it was my name, and and like I, you know, created the songs when we played together. But like he kind of like, for whatever reason, he started a band with the guitar player Blink One Eighty Two, Tom DeLong, and he kind of just kind of stole you know, my name, which is Boxcar Racer. Boxcar Racer was kind of like a, like a job, a jawbreaker kind of like reference. Yeah. Yeah. They have a song called okay. Boxcar. Uh, yeah. But, um, and I'm not like a huge, like jawbreaker band uh, guy, but like, it's just like, Oh, that's kind of cool. But um, anyways, like that, that like experience of like seeing like a dude, like kind of join a band and become successful. just was like, fuck, like anybody, not, not like say like, you know, it's possible to like get lucky and kind of win the lottery, join a band, and then like you're like you know, you kind of like like win lottery or whatever in show business. But um, he definitely did with Blink. But I knew him before and then after. And you know, I will say like he's been cool with me. Like actually kept in touch and reaches out to me and like actually like hey, what's up? You know, how you, how are you? Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as like just like uh him being like you know a great drummer like he's super you know uh, he's incredible I, th I think he's, i think he's like you know as far as like playing that style he's he's really good and i, I know he like produces hip-hop now and shit like that like he's yeah he's definitely like a like uh, on a rhythm st side he is absolutely mm -hmm. fucking incredible 
But, you know, I, I, was, I was a little disappointed by the Blink guys when they played at the bar, except for uh, um, fucking Skiba, who was, you know, typical Skiba, like completely out of his fucking mind, but like super fun. Um, but yeah, it, it's a, it, whatever. It, it, um, so, so how did you hook up with the Alien Ant Farm guys? How did that all happen? So that was like pretty um, organic as far as like the area I'm from, those, those alien I'm from guys are from the, like um, towns nearby where I'm from. I'm, in, I'm from a town called Moreno Valley and they're from a town. Well, one of the guys was from my same town, but um, they would come see Chain of Strength and because they toured with Glassjaw, which is our like probably homies that you know. Long Island. Yeah. Yeah. When they toured the Glass Jaw, when the Glass Jaw singer was like, my favorite band is Tina Strange, they're like, oh shit, I know that fucking guy because I used to see him play shows in my town. Even though those Alien Afro guys are younger than I am, um, they were like, by the, you know, I got a text out of the blue. Can you learn six songs? to go play a show in Cancun, Mexico, which is like a resort. It was like with DJ Scribble, like some bullshit, like just fucking cokehead, like fucking deal. And, um, <laughs> and it was rad. Like, honestly, like, like it, it was like, it was as simple as like a mutual friend that had my number with those dudes. They knew me. They came to see Chain of Strength as kids. You know, um, like Chain of Strength would play a, a club in Riverside with California, which was like a local like venue. Judge played there, Shelter played there, Inside Out played there. But Chain of Strength would play there on the regular. And those Alien Ant Farm guys would come to those shows because like the local speed metal band played there. So like if, if, if Chain of Strength played with like the local speed metal band, they saw them and like, they were like, holy shit, like, I know this guy, like, I've seen him, like, skateboarding around town, like, like, you know, which is, the drummer of that band ended up playing in Excel with me, because I recruited him in Excel, because he recruited me in the Alien Ant Farm. Mike Cosgrove, who played drums in, you know, um, Alien Ant Farm, um, was, like, a little skateboarder kid who used to see me, like, do gnarly shit as a skater, like, just locally. I used to be a pretty, like, like, crazy like skateboarder and he used to see me so like when I was playing in bands he's like oh I remember that guy like he's just fucking do crazy shit you know um skateboard so so it always stuck with him like I made an impression on him and he he basically recruited me to be an alien app farm and um alien app farm obviously was like a very like nice like I worked at Fender just like you know, at the time, and, and it was a nice way to like- Wait, so I wanna, I wanna talk about that. I wanna yeah. talk about y your work at Fender. So yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. You were the guy who would play the guitars to make sure that they were like, at the end of the assembly line, you would sit yeah. there and just jam to Pretty make sure much. that they were cool. So do you do that for ESP now? Yeah, yeah. That's fucking insane. Like, yeah. dude, Alex, like mm -hmm. I've never, heard of a job like that first of all that's like playing video games for a living but like it, it but for you because mm -hmm. you are the you are the fucking most noodly guitar player like ever like you like I, i've never you, you can't sit around a guitar ever without just being like doo -doo -doo -doo, and then you like write like 16 fucking riffs that are brilliant and like like so i can't even imagine that that's your fucking job it's like holy shit like you fell in like, that's incredible. It's incredible. Well, you know what? Like, I'll just say this. Like, I got lucky, you know, like, like maybe I didn't really become, like, a huge rock star, like, you know, on MTV or, but, like, because I fell into, like, this career and working for guitar companies, like, you know, I feel kind of blessed, like, that I did get to play guitar for a living. And I still, like. Because it's what you I, love to do, dude. You know what, like, like, like you know, like, it's very, like, I, I kind of, I kind of, you know, like, I, I'm not even like a super nerd about guitar, but like, for whatever reason, like, guitar just like became a part of my life, you know, and like, yeah, yeah dude, and, and for a good you know? reason, I honestly, listen, bro, like, you know, I'm, th I'm thinking about like 
just in general in like like on a friend basis on a bandmate basis mm -hmm. you know i i can watch that the uh, world fastest car video from club guilty in tokyo uh, mm -hmm. there's two of them actually that i don't know if they're both up but like like and, and you the thing about you on tour is that you literally played something different every night and you know and you were just so good and mm -hmm. the joy that I felt, you know, like I would look over at you and we'd smile at each other and like you, you, you find incredible joy in playing guitar mm -hmm. and, you know, and like, and in, in all honesty, I think you're a better bass player than you are a guitar player even, but like, it, it's a, uh, but like fucking, you know, like that's the thing, man. That's that, that's that joy of just having that guitar in your hand and fucking jamming around. And, you know, it's like, that's fucking killer. So, you know, uh, take that for what it's worth. Fuck being a rock star. Fuck all that shit. You know, like, I, I wanted it so bad. And, you know, I, I don't think it turned me into a bad person, but it, it definitely changed my personality in, in, in a lot of ways. I mean, and when, when I got signed to Geffen in 2002, I, all I felt was punk rock guilt, to mm -hmm. be, tell you the truth. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was going to be like that. I didn't realize that I was going to be like, wow, uh, what, you know, like, I, I feel punk rock guilt. Like, I had Ian Mackay on my shoulder constantly going like, hey, dude, you shouldn't do that. And it's like, fuck you, Ian. There's only one Ian Mackay, and I'm not that guy. So, but like, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's really cool that you do that and that you, like, find, I know you find joy in it. And I know you, like, you have to. Well, you know what? It's funny that you kind of, like, say it that way because, I never had guilt about music, you know, like, I think it's like music has done only anything but make my life interesting, you know, I mean, like, think about all the places you visit, like, you know, you've traveled and, you know, all the people that you work, like, they've never gone to Brazil, they've never gone to Japan, you know. Yeah, exactly. You no, know, it's like, 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 look at this, like, I have these, I have these magazines from when we went to Brazil. I mean, I'm sorry, we went to Japan, like... Oh, shit, no way. What is that? Yeah. Let me see it. Okay, so let me find it. I have a couple of magazines. So when I went um, recently to... Uh, a couple of years ago, I went to um, Japan for Excel, and um, and I, like, this dude came to the show, and he was like, hey, you know, I was here for World's Fastest Car, and um, he was like, he was like, yo, like fucking a, like, I, I don't remember his name, but do you remember this? You, uh, you know what? This one, let me find it. This one's probably quicker to find. Um, I haven't like looked at these in a while. So I brought, I brought a lot, I brought a lot of that shit home too. Oh shit! Oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, but God, I remember taking that picture on the stairs. Yeah. Remember that that's, shit? Yeah, dude, what that's so that? fucking cool. What What's that? that? What club is that? It wasn't Tokyo, I don't think. I, it might have been in Kyoto, uh, um, uh, Osaka. So let me ask you this, okay? So because we were, we, you and I are actually like had fun together. Do you feel bad for Eric Sams? Because you and I were like like homies and like you know you and I and Walter were like, like no I, I I don't because Eric Eric I don't think wanted to be there and he why? just he left he he moved to England man you know he moved to to England to be with his wife and or his future wife but do you like think he, like do you think like he kind of got a raw deal you know what I mean like yeah a little bit but but you know it's just like a, the way it rolls I mean dude that's twenty five years ago I can't even comprehend like I, I I've, I've looked around for Eric you know like yeah. you know like on Facebook and shit like hey is Eric Stams around uh, I don't know but I can't yeah. find him but no I, I mean look it, it was what it was and you know like uh, it we uh it's so awesome that you had that I actually have a bunch of shit Walter had written to me a couple of years ago because yeah. they were they were doing something in alternative press yeah. on his career and he was like do you have any pictures of World's Fastest Car and I was like uh I think so there's some more. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> so this, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to like, kind of like, like not 
But yeah, there's cool, there's rad pictures of us. Like, I don't know. Yeah, dude. Really, that's, that's, yeah. Anyways, cool whatever. Shit. Anyways, um, <laughs> so to kind of like give you my perspective, like, you know what, like, you and I, for whatever reason, we're quick to like be comfortable around each other, and and like I kind of feel like, dude, you like I I came to your Thanksgiving uh, dinner with your parents. Oh I, yeah, that's right, that's right, like, yeah. Like Dice Clay Uncle, remember that guy? <laughs> yeah. Who is that guy? Who is that guy? <laughs> he wasn't my uncle. He's my bro he was my brother-in-law. Kind of Dice Clayish, right? Remember, remember he, he goes, he goes, he's like. Are you guys sure about this? The music industry is really hard. I don't know if you guys are going to fucking do it. We were just like, yeah. I don't fucking know. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> so wait, what, what is your background? Are you like, like a, just straight up Irish kid or what? What's your background? No, no, I'm, I'm Irish, English, Scottish, German, and Russian, Russian Jew. Uh, okay. My dad's side of the family. But, uh, but I, was brought up, I was brought up Catholic. So like my... <laughs> My my whole life was Irish Catholic kids, Italian and okay. Irish Catholic kids, on the South Me Shore. Too. You know, so it's like it, it was always like like we, did, we literally didn't know Mexican kids. I I never had met a Mexican kid. Uh, we we had you know, one black kid in our neighborhood. You know, so like I, I mean I I've met kids. Obviously, I you know I know Orlando and I know like yeah uh, I, you know at, at at that point in my life when I had met you I had known Julian and like not that they're Mexican but like. You know, no, they're, they're they weren't a. Uh... They're not Mexican. I don't know oh shit! Fuck. There you go. Fuck yeah, I dude. Know, I don't know what what the fuck are those guys? I'm Mexican. They're not fucking Mexican. Uh, fucking, Julian's Italian or some shit. Who fuck knows? But like fucking, it, it, but they're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> lovely people who I'm still friends with. But, Thank uh, God, I, I, God for I, them. They, like I had like friends because of the still suit dudes. Like like Julian. Like, and, and, and obviously like Orlando, like they kind of really became, you know, homies to, and I was hung out with Julian and I partied pretty hard, obviously. And I think that was my demise is that like, I got like too social into like really darker territory. Well, and those guys were into, those guys were pretty dark at that point too. You know, yeah. I, I can vividly remember sitting at uh, uh, San Loco and introducing that you to them and then kind of walking away from that situation going, ah, uh, that might've been a mistake. But, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you but know I mean, I, but I, you know, they, they, they're all good now. You're all good now. Everybody's good but, now, you know, so. But you know what though, like to give you credit, like you have, you know, Jen was your girlfriend. And whenever I brought you around, like kind of like chicks, like, like a group of chicks that were like my, my girlfriend at the time, went to FIT, which is like a fashion school in New York City. And I remember like hanging out with you and like getting wasted partying with chicks. So like, you know, her, my girlfriend and her friends and like, you were like such a nice guy to like not cheat on your girlfriend. But, like, <laughs> Cause you know, you probably could have like impregnated somebody at some point. <laughs> but, like, All right. I don't think we could say chicks anymore either. You know, Marilyn Manson, this whole thing's going on. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm going to wrap it up because I got to piss. And uh, dude, I love you. This was fucking great. Thank you so much for doing this. Let's talk soon. Let's fucking let's uh, get the world's fastest car box set together. We'll hit up Walter. It'll be great. Um, <laughs> it'll never happen, but why not talk about it? Um, and uh, thank you, dude. And fucking best of luck to everything you do in the future. I love you. You're fucking love awesome. You. Fucking best. Later, brother. I love you too. Love you too. Later.